My name is Lauren McGuire, and I am a sophomore here at Purdue University studying elementary education. Today, we're going to be talking about in-task standard two, which deals with learning differences. This topic really is relevant and really important with today's education system. Are you ready to get started? This standard, along with 10 others, covers some of the most important information that we as future educators will come to know for the benefit of our children. In task standard number two specifically deals with learning differences and what we as future teachers will be responsible for. Let's learn some more information you think of when you hear the term learning differences. Can you think of any contributing factors to this? See if you can list any. Teachers forget that brain developmental factors, cultural differences, language barriers, and even community values can bring a difference in the classroom when it comes to learning differences. This brings us to the question. What exactly is in-task standard number two? We know it deals with learning differences, but to what extent? Here's the definition of in-task standard number two. The teacher uses the understanding of individual differences and diverse cultures and communities to ensure inclusive learning environments that enable each learner to meet high standards. I encourage you to go on Google and type in in-task standards and, you, and just like that, the first link will pop up and you'll be able to scroll down to see in-task standard number two. When there, you'll notice that there are three main components. Performances, essential knowledge, and critical dispositions. Starting with performances, this is what you essentially will be doing. Knowledge targets what you as a teacher should know about your students. Knowing your students is essential. You should understand how learning occurs, how your students learn, how language in your classroom works, how language and culture intermingle together in a classroom, and how to modify instruction when needed. Physical, emotional, social, and a learner's cognitive development plays a huge part in how a student will perform in school. Knowing these stages can be very helpful when trying to identify why a student may be not doing as well or even performing above and beyond. Knowing your learners can help you help them in making a learning environment favorable for everyone. The last main concept of this in-task standard is critical dispositions. This main part is basically just your responsibilities and ethics part. The teacher should value, respect, and basically just, you know, motivate your student. Um, basically just to make them feel valued. Not because you have to, but because you want to. And that's what we should be doing as teachers. So here I have on this page the critical dispositions. Um, the one that really stands out to me is 2N. The teacher makes learners feel valued and helps them to learn to value each other. I think that's just really amazing because once they leave the classroom and go out into the real world, that's when it really matters. Not if they can pass this test or not, but when they go out into the real world, it's what they can do. So I encourage you just to take a look at these and you know what goes beyond the classroom. So now that we've talked about what in task standard number two is, and now that you've hopefully gone online to look at it yourself. I'd like to talk about two topics that it mentions in that standard, culture and language. In today's world, we have lots and lots of kids coming in from a lot of different places. They're coming into the classroom, and what this creates is a diverse place for each child to be in. And here's the reality, culture matters. Culture is just something that is absolutely fascinating to me. You know, it's at amazingly unique to each child and you never know what you're going to get in a classroom and that is why you have to be so careful and flexible and adaptable to your learning instruction and what you're going to be able to provide for your kids. Stereotypes, providing relevant and culturally diverse curriculum um, and bridging language gaps are all ways to educate and appreciate culture that comes to us in a classroom. You know, it's something that we as future educators and current educators should really appreciate in a child. Culture in itself creates learning differences, and this shouldn't cause a problem. We should welcome it because it creates differences that can be appreciated in each and every one of us. 
This leads me into language mentioned in the standard, which may cause a barrier because of diverse cultures. Watch this video on how this teacher closed a language gap with some of her Korean students. It's just absolutely amazing. When the candy plant opened, we received a large number of children from Korea, and many of them did not speak any English. I had been teaching for about three years, and I found that there were certain sounds in the Korean language that we did not have in the English language, but there were also certain vowel diphthong patterns and vowel patterns that we did have that were similar from the Korean language to the English language. So I developed a flashcard system and I found that it sped up the learning and it helped the children from Korea learn to speak English and to read in English a lot more quickly and to recognize those certain sounds. For instance, there's a long A vowel sound in the Korean language that sounds just like some of our phonic spellings, the A-Y spellings, the A-I spellings. And when I would write R-A-I-N, underline the A-I on a dry erase board, and then draw out for them the long A Korean symbol for that, I found that it was able to click with the Korean students instantly and I did not have to go into any lengthy explanation. They were able to just pick up on that quite quickly because it was something that was meaningful to their language and they could use that information and learn to read English so much more quickly. You are welcome to use that flashcard guide and help any of your students from Korea with it. What a great video, right? So in the standard, you also see the term language acquisition. This simply means the process where children learn their native language. Language is simply important because it's how we talk and communicate with each other. And I encourage you to check out the website to learn more, and even to do some of your own research. So here you can click on this link and learn some more. I really love this website because it's really detailed and it's really easy to understand. Here you can learn some more information. and. Here, I'll highlight for you what language acquisition is. So, what have we learned here? We've really covered a lot of information. One, and that in-task standard is an, a lot of information to know, but how important it is in the classroom. Diverse culture is a really important topic in today's world, especially. It brings a lot of language barriers, diverse cultures, but you as a teacher, and even me, it's so important to understand, especially for the student's benefit. I really hope that you take all of this information into consideration because at the end of the day, we are going to be changing lives and that's so exciting. What we do with the information we gather about our students can help us help them. And who knows, they may just change the world one day and you may have been the one to have ignited that spark in them. And isn't that just amazing? I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.